All right. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and being here with me today. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Effie. I am just about to finish up my master's in psychology. I'm studying clinical and health psychology. I mainly do vlogs, lifestyle and psychology related videos. So if any of that interests you, then please be sure to subscribe down below. You can also hit the bell so you will get notifications whenever I upload. And let's just get into the video. So I didn't really sleep so well last night and my eyes are kind of hurting my head kind of hurts so glasses are needed today sorry for the reflection uh but i'm gonna need them today if you didn't watch the first video that i did on 13 reasons why then be sure to check that out first it's a little bit of a longer video but i think we covered really interesting topics check it out i will link it somewhere up here and i will put it in the description box as well so let's go ahead and take a look at the other five episodes in 13 reasons why season four i want to say a trigger warning right here because there are a lot of topics that we may talk about that could be triggering um i'm gonna say i'm gonna say that the last five episodes i was not really happy about um there were a few parts which really excited me there were a few parts where i was all right okay so they're talking about this so that's great because the show has a really really huge audience and lots of young people teenagers are watching this so i'm really happy about that um but other than that for me it felt as we were going along in the episodes further and further, it just felt a little bit boring for me at some times. But let's just start with episode six. So in episode six, there is a drill. I have never ever experienced anything like this before. In Hungary, we don't do these things. I think I kind of touched on this on the first part of these reaction videos. So I think there's a huge difference there. This is a really big question and I wanna really open up this conversation in the comments down below what do you think what could be more safe for children in high school having these drills and preparing them for maybe somebody getting a gun and getting into the school and start shooting and having these drills so they prepare them for these situations and giving that thought that this could be very real and this could happen or regulate laws on being able to own a gun what do you guys think if you're interested in my opinion, I would rather go with the second one. I myself wouldn't really feel safe. For me, having these drills or having to do these drills for these kids, for me, it seems really damaging. Really damaging for their mental health and mostly damaging for their feeling of safety. And having these drills, I wouldn't really feel safe in that environment. I wouldn't put that kind of train of thought to kids' minds and have that association with school. I don't know, but that's just my opinion. I don't know, guys, what you are thinking. If you are from the US, I would really love to hear what you have to say. So first, uh, the guys, they don't really know if it's a real thing or it's not a real thing. Then it turns out at the end that it was just a drill. There was nobody shooting, nobody had a gun actually. Lots of the boys, especially Clay, thought that it was Tyler because if you remember in one of the seasons, Tyler almost went into, I think it was school prom and he almost started shooting and Clay was the one who stopped him. It was really interesting for me to see that Clay is getting more and more open about how he's feeling and he's opening up a little bit more and more every time he's in therapy with his therapist. That's, that's a good sign. Sign. that's always a good sign another thing that stuck out for me from episode 6 Zach is back in school so if you remember in episode 5 it ended with them going off the road actually they crashed the car and they had a car accident and Zach he said we crashed the car and then you ditched me and Clay swears that he doesn't remember now this has been happening a lot actually I was talking about this series with my therapist in my therapy session uh, because it was I was really interested in his input like what he wanted to say about it as a professional i <laughs> i felt so bad because i didn't even realize that this theme of clay not remembering things has been happening from the first season i have realized it throughout this season a lot like he is having dark spots let's just put it that way in episode six they were saying it a lot zach is saying that that clay ditched him and clay says that he doesn't remember then they are doing this exercise in school cleaning out a gunshot wound which is also really weird for me like why would you have to learn that in school 
how to clear out a gunshot wound if you're only in high school and you're not a math student and this is not gonna be your job. Um, anyways, kind of touched on that association a bit before. I think the camera shows that they're uh, working in pairs and they're trying to clean the gunshot wound and then I think the video cuts and I don't know who Clay was doing the exercise bit with but uh, that person says that Clay just froze and didn't really do anything. Then Clay says again that he doesn't remember. So this whole theme, Clay not remembering things, it's really much uh, happening and this is going to be a key in what his diagnosis is going to be at the end. Uh, one more thing about episode 6 because this one I really enjoyed and I was, um, it's weird to say, but I was smiling. I was smiling because they put this in there. I think it could be really really helpful for a lot of people. I know that this was helpful, helpful for me. During the drill in one of the rooms there's Tony, Alex, Charlie and they hear gunshots. So Alex starts breathing really heavily. Charlie is right there with him. At first we see that Charlie doesn't really know what to do. We see that he really really wants to help Alex feel better. Alex starts shaking and you can see that he doesn't really know like where to go. Like, the fight or flight is kicking in, I feel like, um, but at the same time he's paralyzed. So basically he's having a panic attack. And first Charlie doesn't really know what to do. And then he says, focus on your hands, squeeze them. So this is a really great technique to do whenever someone has a panic attack. I believe that it is called grounding. So you're supposed to use your five senses. I know whenever I'm having a panic attack, I haven't really had one in a long time, so I'm really happy about it. But when I had one, I started uh, using it, uh, but I was really happy that they showed this because I feel like this could help a lot of people. It's a really, really easy technique. And I think it's something that you don't need another person per se to do it with, so you can do it by yourself. You just have to be really, really conscious about it. At the end of episode six, Clay decides to put on a show, I would say. Um, for me, this was really unrealistic again, going against the principal like this, because it turns out that the principal was the one who was founding this drill. And when they finished the drill, basically there were these armed policemen. I think they were policemen. They were armed for sure. Clay just goes off, starts shouting and takes one of the policeman's guns and he's just really trying to prove a point that having these drills are not normal. The situation escalates so badly that they take away Clay, they put him in a bed and they strap him down and then in episode 7 we see that Clay is in a hospital. Um, I also asked <laughs> my therapist about this, like how realistic is this? Like is it something that would happen in the US but is it something that we would do at home? But that's just a really weird thing to talk about because we would never have a drill like this in the first place but if we do take somebody into um, the psychiatry. I don't think it would happen this way. I'm trying to remember what we studied, but I feel like by law you cannot strap somebody down because that violates their human rights. Uh, please correct me if I'm not right? But in some cases, hospitals and doctors can do this. So I believe that those cases are when the person is violent against somebody else or violent against themselves. I guess Clay here uh, with having the gun going around almost shooting somebody, I guess that was their, that was their point. Like why they could take him away like this, I have no idea. In episode 7 they do say that they strapped him down because of uh, possibility of self-harm, so that is what I try to explain. When I was in the hospital, not last semester but before, my patient was a middle-aged man and the first time I met him, where well, they brought him in because of alcohol consumption, alcohol in his blood was so high. He did show a lot of signs of possible self-harm. Harm. And I remember the second day that I went in, we had a talk and he told me that he was so happy because they took him to a other room and I was happy that I could actually see some emotions on his face. And so when we finished the conversation, we would have rounds and then we would go around and see all of the patients in all of the rooms. The first room that we visited 
was this um, room which I have no idea how it's called in English but basically they put people there who are who are showing signs of um, like possibility of self-harm and they need 24-hour surveillance and also people who are living with really severe dementia and I remember this feeling when I went inside and I saw my patient and it was really hard to see because first he was so happy I remember in the morning so happy like he called me a, a doctor even though I'm not a doctor <laughs> but he called me oh hey doctor uh, you know what I'm so happy because I get to be in this other room and I thought that they did put him in another room and that it was something great um, but it turns out that they put him into this 24-hour surveillance room because there was a really high possibility of him uh, doing self-harm in episode 7, not much happened for me. They are doing college interviews. In Clay's evaluation, they said that he's not psychotic, but he has stress management issues. <laughs> That's a really big difference. They say that psychosis is an abnormal mental state involving significant problems with reality testing. It is characterized by serious impairments or disruptions in the most fundamental higher brain functions, such as perception, cognition and cognitive processing and emotions or effect as manifested in behavioral phenomena such as delusions, hallucinations and significantly disorganized speech. Psychosis can not only be present as a symptom, but it can also can be a psychotic disorder. So what is a psychotic disorder? Well, specific symptoms indicative of psychotic disorders are delusions, hallucinations and markedly disorganized speech thought or behavior. Individuals may have little or no insight into their symptoms. Some examples of psychotic disorders are schizophrenia, schizophreniform disorder, schizoaffective disorder, delusional disorder, brief psychotic disorder, and psychotic disorders due to substance or to medical condition. Yeah, also something really weird that Clay decides to ditch the hospital, so he just escapes. Um, in my hospital, nobody could escape because the doors can only be open from the outside so the patients cannot go outside um, only if a nurse lets them out or a doctor lets them out so that's just um, weird and he ends up at his therapist's home which is uh, well violating a lot of ethical <laughs> lines uh, you would never do that but the way his therapist deals with this situation was great absolutely like 10 out of 10 okay let's see season 4 episode Eight, which was called acceptance and rejection the way this episode started was a bit too much for me it was like if you were in a video game i was not really keen on this part i don't really know why they put this in here so remember when in episode six they thought that tyler was the one who was going to shoot in the school well it turns out that tyler is actually an informant for um, the police so that's why they saw all those photos about the guns that was interesting um, that was really interesting I was not expecting that so that's a good plot twist plot twist right there turns out that Zach cannot graduate really does seem like Zach lost hope Zach is one of my favorite person on this show I think they didn't really do him justice with the storyline that they put him in in episode 7 they also brought up the topic of racism I don't feel like I'm the person who should be talking about racism I am not a person of color <laughs> for sure but I'm not 100% Hungarian if you didn't know but I don't really feel like it is my place to talk about this there are a lot of amazing youtubers black youtubers who are talking about their experiences and talking about the black lives matter movement i will be sure to put all the resources down in the description box again so you can go ahead and check it out if you want to educate yourself on the black lives matter movement or on racism as well there are a lot of great videos and also some videos are talking about racism from a social psychology aspect of it. So if you're interested, then check out the uh, description box down below. Okay, moving on. Tony does have the fight with this guy and I'm really happy because he won. So later in the episode, Diego and Justin are having a fight and injustice for me, it just boils my blood. If there is something that I cannot take, that's injustice. They're having a fight and the policeman who is there in the school which is also again really weird like why are there police 
in the school anyways the policeman only starts uh, targeting Diego he pushes him into onto a locker even Justin is outraged because they both started the fight or if I'm right they both started a fight but the policeman is only targeting Diego because he is a person of color again injustice again racism no it's a huge no. It was really hard for me to see this scene. Yes, I wrote down that they start a fight and a police breaks them up, only targets Diego calling him a Mexican, because he is. But the way that he says it, like, it's a problem. Like, why would that be a problem? I'm just never gonna understand this. Like, why is that a problem? Somebody's ethnicity, somebody's color, somebody's... I don't know what language they speak, what, what color of hair they have. Like, let people be who they want to be. That's just my point. Let them be. Let them be who they want to be. Let them love who they want to love. I'm never gonna understand this. At the end of episode 8, it turns out that uh, Diego finds out that it was Jess. It was Jessica who killed Bryce. Then a car explodes and the screen goes black and then we see Clay in therapy. And then Clay says that he didn't remember burning it and setting it on fire and that's when the therapist says that then we have a problem. Let's move on to episode 9. They're having a prom, finally they can hold a high school prom. I love this episode, it was really emotional in a few parts. Uh, for me, at some places it felt a bit elongated and a few parts were a bit unnecessary for me. I want to talk about the part of this episode where Clay is talking about anxiety and dissociation. So let's just talk about dissociation a little bit. I'm gonna put it here on the screen and um, I'm also putting some links in the description box if you're interested. According to American Psychiatric Association DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that psychologists and psychiatrists use to um, help diagnose patients, dissociation is, quote, a disruption of and or discontinuity in the normal integration of consciousness, memory, identity, emotion, perception, body representation, motor control, and behavior. According to the ICD-10, which is the International Classification of Diseases, and this one is more um, used by doctors, but some of the mental illnesses are also in there, so psychologists and psychiatrists can also use it. So according to ICD-10, dissociation is a partial or complete loss of the normal integration between memories of the past, awareness of identity and immediate sensations and control of bodily movements. So the most common way to experience dissociation is through trauma. If somebody is experiencing really severe trauma, sometimes what our minds do is that they cannot really take that really, really negative experience that they're having. So they are trying to put it into, let's just say, two different boxes. So it would be easier to deal with because then you won't even realize that there are boxes there. I know that this is a really weird way of saying it, but this is how our mind is trying to protect us from all those experiences, all those emotions and all those horrible feelings that we felt during experiencing that trauma. Our mind just puts it away in another box so it won't be dealt with on a conscious level. This is what happened with Clay in one of the first episodes of season four. So sometimes these memories can come out if something reminds you of that trauma. Also, if you're really not remembering, that means that you have pushed it down so so down that you need a really specific technique to bring those memories up so that you can remember it um, hypnosis can help in these situations so this is what i found about dissociative amnesia which i am kind of 100 percent sure that this is what clay is having it says that a common dissociative symptom is dissociative amnesia the apparent lack of memory see because he doesn't remember blowing up the car and so many other things so lack of memory usually of a stressful but traumatic nature. The lack of memory is only apparent, however, because of the nature of dissociation, the memory can be usually accessed when the person is in another personality trait or part under hypnosis, that's what I was trying to explain, in dreams or during traumatic flashback experiences, aka for example in PTSD. Episode 10 is graduation. It was a bit long for me, I think it was a longer episode than usually the other episodes. It was 
a bit too much for me. The way that they wrote off Justin, I don't think it was fair. <laughs> I don't feel like that was supposed to be the end for him. It was really emotional at the same time and I did cry a lot. But the way he acted, I think that was really great. I think he's a really, really great actor. So when Jess wanted to say goodbye to Justin, I was pretty freaking heartbroken. They just found their way back to each other and the way that Jess said, you taught me what love is. It was so freaking, oh, I'm having the chills right now. It was so beautiful and I love the love that these two have had for each other. At graduation, Clay is telling a speech to everyone and he opens up about um, having anxiety and having depression. And uh, it was great to see again. Decided to show in the series that it's okay to open up if you have any kind of a mental illness. It is just as normal if you have a broken leg. So the end of the series was pretty basic for me. I really like when they have an open ending, like they're opening up another question and at the end of movies or series they make you want to think. But they did touch on a lot of important issues such as racism, trauma, PTSD, having AIDS, um, lots of love, lots Lots and lots of different things but at the end was just a really bit um, plain for me I want to say Whew, this was a long one again I'm sorry I enjoyed this series I was not that hyped about it than the first two seasons I want to say as I said a trillion times I'm happy that they're opening up this conversation I really hope that talking about mental health and mental illnesses and destigmatizing them is not gonna go away with this show ending I hope that in other shows are still going to talk about it so thank you guys so much for watching please let me know down below what you thought about this series I'm gonna take these glasses off because I have a bit better on oh, my eyes are hurting so bad anyways so please let me know down below what you thought and how you would rate this series if you watched the series did you like it I'm also trying to do these videos to destigmatize mental health as you know let me know anything you want to let me know down below if you're not subscribed yet then you can do it down below and don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so you will be notified every time I upload a new video so thank you so much for watching I hope you're having an amazing day today and I will see you guys in the next video love you guys bye